Ah, uh, civilization. It's a balancing act between acquiring knowledge and wiping it from our collective history. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. In today's installment, we're counting down the top 5 facts about banned literature. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. Every year, people across America fight back against censorship by partaking in Banned Books Week, which runs during the last week of each September. But you don't need to wait until then to familiarize yourself with humanity's love-hate relationship with written word. Come along as we skim through the many chapters and plot points that make up the story of banned literature. I love print media. You love print media? I like print media. You like print media? Number 5. A History of Censorship by Fire In the modern Western world, when a book is banned, it often means that the publication in question simply can't be taught in school or made available in libraries. But throughout history, prohibited texts have been subjected to much stricter censorship. Across various cultures, book burning has been the go-to method for protecting the public from so-called dangerous knowledge. In 213 BC, the first emperor of the Qin Dynasty allegedly had history books, poetry and philosophy burned in an effort to consolidate power. It's also suspected that the destruction by fire of the Library of Alexandria may have been intentional. Fast forward through countless historic book burnings and we get to Nazi Germany, where tens of thousands of books were burned in the name of preserving the German identity, often by students. Number 4. A book is challenged, then banned So what's the process of banning a book nowadays if it's not trial by fire? Before a book can be officially banned in any institution, it needs to be challenged and a case made for it to be censored. So who cares enough to go through such trouble rather than just, you know, not reading the book? According to the American Library Association, parents. Won't somebody please think of the children? As of 2015, 40% of all challenges come from parents. On average, a few hundred challenges are recorded each year by the ALA. But how does a book go from challenged to banned? A governing body or committee of the school or library in question will meet and review the challenge. And I say smut and filth like this has no place in our schools! Typically, unless material is found to be glaringly offensive to the general public, most institutions will not ban a book unless it receives numerous challenges. Number 3. Many of the most famous books have been banned in various places The more famous, critically acclaimed, or academically analyzed a book or series is, the more likely it is to have been challenged. The books have nothing to say! Essentially, the more culturally relevant a book is, the more some folks want to see it kept out of impressionable hands. The likes of Catch-22, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, The Fault in Our Stars, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, The Grapes of Wrath, Slaughterhouse-Five, Naked Lunch, Fahrenheit 451, and Frank the Diary of a Young Girl, and the Harry Potter series have all been banned by various school boards, schools, or libraries in America over the years. Why? The justifications are varied. Immoral, against family values, racist, homosexuality, violent content, sexual content, age inappropriate, political views, the consumption of substances, and many, many more. <sighs> this is a very, very bad book. Number two, taboo books have gotten people into legal trouble. Why the hell was this book banned? While many fans of free speech and creative expression openly scoff at challenging and banning of books, historically, ignoring such bans has landed people in serious hot water. When Allen Ginsberg's controversial poem Howl was published in 1956, various people were arrested and accused of obscenity, including bookseller Shigeyoshi Murao and Lawrence Ferlinghetti, the book's publisher. In the end, both were declared innocent. And I find the book is not obscene. The defendant is found not guilty. What's more, teachers who ignore school bans on certain books have been fired. Throughout the 1960s, multiple American teachers were dismissed for teaching Catcher in the Rye, 1984, and One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And while some teachers got their jobs back, others weren't so lucky. You will read it at home, and you will all be mature about its adult themes and language. Aww. Number one, the justifications aren't always understandable. You banned Henry Miller. You banned D.H. Lawrence. Chet. Giovanni's room because it's too homosexual. Stop it right now. Sure, there are arguments for banning books. Admittedly, you wouldn't want someone teaching graphic, sexually explicit material to elementary school kids. The issue with banning books, however, is that it sets a dangerous precedent. Where do you draw the line? 
Scott DeMarco, a Mansfield University librarian, wanted to highlight just that issue when he intentionally banned an undeserving book in order to draw attention to the problem inherent with censorship. Plenty of books have been banned or challenged for ridiculous reasons before, but sadly not all prove a point. It's wrong to destroy literature. Harriet the Spy for encouraging sneaky behaviour, Little Red Riding Hood for showing a child in possession of wine, and Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? because the author had the same name as a Marxist theorist. So there's that. <laughs> with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.